everyone, I'm Liz Habib, coming at you from the Ion Cafe. Welcome to the 2022 season opener of the winning side on Ion Sports Network. Well, I'm cozy here, having a cooking it up here in the studio, cooking it up, are two of my favorite guys, talking football, Vince Ferragamo and Jackie Slater. Hey, guys. Hey, Liz. Liz, how you doing? <laughs> Good to I'm see great, you, and it's good to see you. It's good to see you guys, too. Let's get right to some football and to the Rams, because today, hey, tonight, Sean McVay is sitting at home after suffering his second worst humiliation of his coaching career after that loss in the Super Bowl and against the Patriots, as we all know well. And you guys know that this was one of the worst losses that he has had along the way, and he is feeling humiliated. Jackie. What happened to that offensive line? <laughs> well, you know, Liz, I, I, I honestly sit there and I watch this game, and in my mind I'm trying to conjure up some reasons why I was seeing what I was seeing. But there's no mistake about it, and you can't get around this fact. Sean McVay, and God bless him, he had a lot of success a year ago doing this. He's done it ever since he's been in the league. But he doesn't play his offensive line, any of his starting players, in the, play, in the preseason. And for me, one of the most highly skilled positions in all of pro football is the offensive line. And they are all very young guys and in new positions and whatnot, like Note Bloom, for example, going against Vaughn Miller. And I think these guys nice need match. to play in the preseason. They need to get reps in the preseason. That didn't happen. And, and to be honest with you, as I viewed that game and I was sitting at the 50-yard line, Liz, when I watched that, it looked like... Uh, a preseason game, maybe even the first preseason game. I was very disappointed for the guys, but I mean, you know, you, the coach, he, he blamed himself and he has to take responsibility because the guys simply weren't ready to execute technically. He always blames himself. He always says it, it, it's his fault that they were so bad. I mean, we can look at his play calling. It was bad, but wait, before we go there, Vince, yes. we got to talk about Jared Allen. I mean, you Jared Allen is one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the league. We can go to Patrick Mahomes in a little bit, just hold oh. off. But Jared Allen can run, he can pass, he is so smooth. What was he, 83% completion rate? Everybody's picking these guys, Vince, it, after one game. Yeah, he, he was unbelievable, Liz, and he was a great talent coming out of college. And, and Jackie was at the game, he was being honored last week. They could have used Jackie's services for sure. <laughs> I don't know Matt about Stafford that. Matt Stafford was sacked seven times. It was too many times. <laughs> but anyway, Josh Allen, you have to credit Sean McDermott in this entire offense and uh, their, their entire staff because they designed a great offensive playbook against the Rams. No I mean, doubt. they were throwing quick passes, 2.2 seconds. I mean, Aaron Donald did have no chance of getting to the quarterback. They had great runs. They had trick plays. They were ready to play, Jackie, and I don't know – you got that team. They looked like they were mid-season form. I mean, he was electric. 297 yards passing. He was 31 for what, uh, 36 passing and four touch, three touchdowns. I mean, they were just great. Uh, Stephon Diggs played a great game. Just the great game plan, great running attack. They Vince, just Vince, you know the, the other thing about uh, Buffalo that jumped out at me, with me having just recently stopped coaching in college, is that we saw that read option scheme uh, being used flawlessly here at the pro level. This guy is a 240 pound quarterback. He's a physical guy. He seems like a linebacker looking at him in his uniform and they have no problems with allowing him to read a defensive end chasing the back and pulling that ball and running for the yardage. He, he's a physical guy and that's an extra dimension that he brings to the table, Six, Vince. 6'5", 240 pounds. That's a Actually, big quarterback. That's, that's, that's a big, a big quarterback. Yeah. But they were, they were great. They so played that's, a great game. So let's switch off to the other side of the ball, which was Matt Stafford, right? You already mentioned sacked yeah. seven times, right? Yeah. Matt Stafford came out of the Super Bowl, right, looking like the hero, having the great redemption of his career game, only to come all the way back down to earth to, to pretty much that Matt Stafford, Jackie, that Matt Stafford. Well, he I mean, did take some of the blame. And, and, and he's, uh, he's been around a good coach that has a tendency – as a leader to take the blame and I and I respect and I appreciate that in Matthew Stafford. I watched Matthew Stafford this entire summer and you know he didn't throw a lot They kept him on a low pitch count and it was just revealed here recently locally that he had some sort of a procedure on his elbow 
And so I thought the Rams came out and they tried to run the football. I mean, they tried to get the ball inserted into the line of scrimmage and establish the run again. It just didn't work here again in part because I think the offensive line's skill wasn't practiced enough in the preseason to really handle a lot of the blocks at the line of scrimmage. So they did, they tried to do it. But ultimately, I mean, through the first half, the guy threw the football 28 times. 28 times, that's way too many times mm -hmm. for a first half for a guy that's been nursing an elbow all, all summer long. So I was disappointed to see that, disappointed that they didn't have success running the football. And now, in my heart of hearts, I am concerned of whether or not uh, Matthew Stafford is going to have long-term problems because if they can't run the ball, they certainly don't have a 220-pound back to give it to 30 times a game. They can't do that. So he's going to have to throw the ball, and it's going to be interesting to see how a 12, 13-year guy holds up when he's already having problems with his throwing elbow well that's not good not good at all you, uh, you just mentioned the running back do they have a running back cam Akers, daryl henderson do they have a running back Vince, well, that can get through well this they, go ahead season? like like daryl henderson he started the game and i was looking for cam Akers, but i didn't see him anywhere so he was nowhere to be found but you know when you only rush for 40 52 yards against buffalo buffalo's defense deserves a lot of credit but the game plan should have included some different design running plays to get the ball and move the ball on the ground. Matt Stafford had tendonitis in his arm. I would have never dreamed that he would throw 41 times in that first opening game when he had no preseason games at all to play. So he only throws for 240 yards, threw three interceptions, some of the balls behind the receiver. And when you only have one receiver like Cooper Cup, they got to get somebody else to throw the ball to. I mean, Obviously, Odell Beckham wasn't in the lineup, and maybe that hurt the team some, but you got to have some weapons outside of, of Cooper Cup. The timing was off, Vince. You know, it went back to, did they practice? Did yeah. they play enough in the preseason? This was a sloppy, sloppy preseason game. That's what it was. That's what it looked like out there on the field. Well, we, you, you, yeah. you know, I, gotta, I, gotta, I have to say this, though, Liz and Vince. You know, if you think about where Sean McVay came from, He's out of the coaching tree up there in San Francisco. And I labored it. I just I can't tell you how much failure we had against the San Francisco 49ers and what I felt was an average group of, uh, of blockers. But you know what? They never played these guys in the preseason. They hardly took any reps at all. And then they come out and they systematically get the ball out of the quarterback's hand. They systematically have success in some of their running game. And we were just having a difficult time to get on the field to compete against these guys. So Sean McVay is from that school. And especially now with the salary cap being what it is and like it is, you pay all these guys a ton of money and then you get one of them hurt in the preseason, you can't go out and replace that guy with with comparable talent. So I understand the pressures that uh, uh, Sean McVay, for example, is under and any other coach that won't play his players, but this is what I know. In the offensive line, more than anybody else, if you had asked me not to play in the preseason and then show up and play in a regular season game <laughs> against Von Miller, who knows how many sacks I would have given up. That's not uncommon. It's going to happen every time uh, for a young guy like No Boom, and so that does fall on the coach. All I know, Jack, is they got to come more prepared to play that opening game. I know it was a short week in the Thursday game, but, hey, if you have a short week, you got to prepare at least one or two games in preseason and get ready for that opener. Absolutely. There's no doubt yeah. about it. How about that? How about the Rams defense? Like, where were the Rams superstars? Jalen <laughs> Ramsey got burned down there how many times? Aaron Donald, what did we see? If Aaron Donald's trying to do to stop the run, then he's not pass rushing. Okay. Well, Stephon Diggs, Stephon Diggs beat uh, Jalen Ramsey a couple times, Jack, and for a couple scores. I mean, he had two touchdowns, and you said he had like, what was the rating against him? I, I think it was like 153 QBR. With, 100, not, with 124 yards. higher than that. With 124 yards and two touchdowns. But yeah. here again, Vance, the problem, Jalen Ramsey had a problem with his shoulder. He had a procedure on his shoulder. So all through training camp, you know, yeah, he might have moved his legs around a little bit, but he definitely was protected from a lot of contact, probably didn't get into a lot of contested balls until right at the end of training camp. So here's a guy, here's one of the best, arguably the best cover corner in all the pro football now, shows up in the first game and he plays like that and he, he gives up all those kind of yards to a really good receiver and I believe that the offensive line and the secondary guys after the quarterback are the positions that require the most amount of consistent use of skill high levels of skill 
and Jalen Ramsey hasn't been working on that level of skill at a very high and intense uh, pace, and it showed up in the game. It was as simple as that. Right, and you know what? The Buffalo Bill defense just outplayed the Rams defense, and Devon Miller had three sacks, so his coming home surprised, really surprised the Rams. They weren't expecting this kind of pass rush. Their defense, they put a lot of time and effort in the offseason beefing up their defensive line, Jackie, and their offensive line. And it showed in this game, Liz, and that's where it is. It's all one up front. And, Liz, one other thing I want you ask about this, and I probably went over it a little bit, but, you know, uh, the, 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 when I watched the Rams' defensive line, early in the ball game, Aaron Donald had a sack. In fact, he had the first sack overall in this particular game. But now I'm looking and I don't see Sebastian Joseph Day. Mm -hmm. He's over at the Chargers now. And I'm, and I'm looking and I don't see Von Miller. Remember, he had eight sacks down the stretch as they went and won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I don't see these guys. And so uh, now, now Jackie, this is, you did see. You did see Von Miller. Yeah, <laughs> on the other side <laughs> of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw him. Well, Matt Stafford <laughs> didn't want to see him like that either. I, I saw him, but I didn't want to see him. I didn't want to see him. Yeah, well. And so what I saw was I saw Greg Gaines. And Greg Gaines is a is a hardworking guy. He plays the run really well, and he does some supplemental pass rush. But what I did not see was any edge pass rush coming off the edge, getting no, after no those tackles. Rush. And uh, you know, for me, if you have really good pass rushers, you take a guy like Aaron Donald. You don't go out and throw the football at Aaron Donald, you know, half the time. You go out and you hit Aaron Donald in the lips. You make Aaron Donald at 283 or 90 pounds play against a 315 or 25 pound man that's consistently hitting him in the cheeks. And Jack, that's you the know way you neutralize a guy like you know, that. And they didn't. They, they came out and tried to do that. And the game plan they used, Liz, they threw the ball an average of 2.2 seconds for the quarterback holding the ball. There's no human being that can get to a quarterback if he releases the ball within 2.2 seconds. Not, not at all. And their game plan, their trick plays, they were just more prepared overall to play this game, and it showed up. You know what? Let me go back to the beginning there. Jared Allen is the best quarterback in the game right now. Josh, and I'm sticking Josh with Allen. that. Josh oh, Allen. Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Josh Allen. That's right. Yes, is the best quarterback in the game right now. He is just amazing. And I thought it at the end of last season, and I'm sticking with it at the beginning of this season. He is great. Well, he wins games all by himself. There's He's another great quarterback, too, field. Liz, out here on the West Coast, too. Well, there's a few. but There's a few. but. but well, you know what? The guy we'll talk now about that you next. bring up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that you bring that up, and you did mention the Chargers, Jackie, why don't we switch over to the Chargers? They played the Raiders. They won 24 to 19, and they did look like they played in the preseason and practiced, and they do look like they are in midseason form. Agreed, Vince? I, yeah. I, I have to agree. I, I do to too. Agree. I do. You know, Justin Herbert was awesome. I mean, Brandon Staley had a great defense. I think their defense is so much more improved than they were last year, Jackie. I mean, they got. Uh, Khalil Mack. They got Khalil Mack. They're just rocking and rolling. Derwin James, they've, they've got it all lined up, Liz, and they're responding to the coaching staff when they make calls. And on offense, you have Joe Lombardi at the helm calling the plays again for the second year with Justin Herbert. The sky's the limit in my mind. And I think when you can throw, what did he throw? Three touchdowns, four touchdowns? No picks. Justin Herbert. Yeah, it was unbelievable. No picks. I mean, his quarterback rating was like 129. Something like that, just unreal. So, I mean, they, they were lights out. They played well today against a good Raider team. The Raiders are improved as well. So, watch out. The Raiders it, are, are, and, are for real. And too. you know the thing that I really liked about what they did over there, Liz? Uh, they had unique balance. They had a fantastic uh, run-pass ratio. Uh, Joe Lombardi, as Vince said, did a fantastic job calling the game, and he knows that he's got a young offensive line. But if you take a look at the that's Johnson, their right guard, who was the 17th overall pick this past draft, and then you take a look at the, what they did the previous year with Slater, uh, Rashawn Slater, those two guys played as well as anybody in their offensive line, and they're young guys. So their offensive line coach is doing a fantastic job job of, of, of getting them ready to play and then he has them prepared not only to be a good pass blocking team to protect Justin Herbert but these guys can run block they can get into the guys maintain contact drive them down the field drive them laterally and create lanes for insertion with those backs I was more impressed with the way their offensive line played uh, in this particular game than any other time all of last year 
Brandon Staley came into the season last season, right? It's his first season as a head coach. Yeah. He comes in defense strong. Where do you see differences between the beginning, this first game, and where he was last season as the head coach? I think, I think first of all, I think he's one year more experienced. And I think, you know, he's made a few errors in his play calling, especially going for fourth down a lot. He did it once in this game, and you almost thought he might do it again. But I think he's in more control. He's more relaxed. He's got a great coaching staff about what he's got going, and the players believe in him as a coach. And so he's got his defense rolling. As you saw in this game, they were standout. They really they played really well. Were. They got after the quarterback. They covered well. There was not a lot of open gaps in their coverage. And I, I just think they played very well. And offense is steady. So when you have a good offense, a defense that can play like that, you're going to go somewhere. And I think a lot of it has to do with Brandon Staley. Definitely. You know, we and start with the Chargers every season, you guys. Every season. Is this a season they could do it here? They've got this great quarterback. Now, I think their defense, like you say, looks really strong. Is this a team that goes deep in the playoffs? Or is there going to be a, a Charger curse? Well, I, <laughs> I, 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 it's hard to say right now, Liz, right out of the shoot. But this is what we do know. If you looked at the Charger football team today if you looked at them they played well in every facet of the game which told me that the coaching job that's uh, that's occurring there is is it's all encompassing they did a great job on special teams they did a really good job as Vince said with their defense and then offensively one of their one of their Achilles heels a year ago was the offensive line they drafted Johnson in with the second overall pick they brought in Corey uh, Lindsay uh, and made him the highest paid center in the game and he's directing traffic there this is a solid front right now there's a very uh, capable front of being able to run the football be being able to throw the football, and that's that's really encouraging. Now, the other thing, Vince, and we talked about this a year ago, Brandon Staley is getting buy-in from his players. Brandon Staley, yeah. a year ago, gambled and went for first-down conversions on fourth down more than any team in the National Football League. Here again today, he comes out and he does the same thing, and I saw no hesitation. I saw no doubt on anyone's mind as he made that call because he has told those guys that he is not going to lose a football game by not trusting in his starting offensive players, and that includes the line, the quarterback, the receivers, the running back. This guy, uh, he says what he's going to do, and he does what he says, and his team is behind him 100%, Vince. Well, they did the quarterback sneak, Jackie. They were 100% last year every time they ran it with Justin Herbert. Tonight, it was the other way around because the Raiders were ready for that quarterback sneak, and it happened to be on fourth down and short. So, uh, you know, had they retrospect, they're looking back at it, they probably wouldn't have went on a quick count, and he may have just took the ball and just went around the right tackle, but... As it turned out, the, the Raiders were ready for that quarterback sneak. But I, I, I got a feeling we're going to still see a lot more <laughs> fourth oh, down yeah. attempts oh, yeah. by sure. this team. They, they, this guy oh, yeah. wants to win. You guys see it as a liability. He sees it as it's obvious a way to win. He's aggressive and sees it as a way to win. You see old school. Sorry, guys. Well, He sees something new in this, and that's yeah. he's not going to stop going for He's looking at downs. analytics, Liz. He's looking at analytics, that's thinking, exactly yeah, fourth right. down, I'm you know, going to play the percentages. And so. you know what? I, I, I got to feel, exactly right. I also, Liz, I have to feel that that's who Brandon Staley is. I have to feel this guy, I mean, think about it. This guy had the shorter, one of the shortest journeys to become a head coach in the National Football League than probably 90% of the guys that are coaching in the, in the National Football League now, with the exception of maybe Sean McVay. This guy got nothing this, wrong with that. This guy has nothing gotten the job, that. and he has delivered with the preparation of his team. Mm -hmm. They're always prepared. You don't get a sense that, any, that he's being outcoached at any step of the way, and we would somewhat criticize him for going for it on fourth downs, but when you think about it, this galvanizes and energizes a young team and make them feel like, hey, this guy trusts me. It's a confidence factor. So he's building, building confidence in his team, in team. and his exactly. team has confidence in him. Right. So I don't think it's a, a liability at all. Jackie, I just want to be sure that you're sure of yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I wish my coaches had gone for it on fourth and one hey, yeah, at the 50-yard line a whole lot more <laughs> yeah. times than we right did. Right behind you guys, we could have got a yard Absolutely, easy, absolutely. <laughs> I just love when you
you work on in that lather and you just got it going and you're like <laughs> preaching to me about what's going on out there. That's that's my favorite part, right, Vince? That's uh, right. Guys, you know you know what game I watched today? Steelers Bengals. I want to see how oh. the Bengals look, right? So Bengals went to the oh, Super Bowl, yeah. how's Duro Burrow looking out there? And then I see this game, it goes into overtime and it's just a sloppy mess, and the Steelers win it twenty three to twenty. They pull it off, but they suffer in the process because TJ Watt now has a, a peck injury and Jackie mm. you had one of those once that's it, a that's a real deal man that could put him injuries. out for months it, it, it is it, it, yeah. months he he may never play again this season i when i tore my peck i was in my 17th year and uh, it, had i been younger they would have reattached it. they would have given me a surgery list and i saw guys that were younger than me that had that same injury who had surgeries and they retoured again. In fact, it became an ongoing, consistent problem where they kept tearing the tissue in the peck. And every time you tear it, it's not like you can go and play because it totally immobilizes you over there. So, you know, this is one of the things, the argument against doing um, what uh, the head coach at Pittsburgh does and doing what Sean McVay does is that you do run the risk of losing your players. Now, if you look at the preseason games, yeah, they the, played Pits a lot. the Pittsburgh play a lot. Steelers played their starting ball players yeah. more, perhaps more than anybody. And I remember, I remember Watt limping off the field in one of their preseason games. So, you know, they, they, they went into the regular season uh, honed and ready uh, to play at a different level, but maybe they were too nicked up. And these problems begin to manifest themselves. Jackie, That's what McVeigh probably is trying to avoid. But Jackie, it paid off today because that, their preparation for this game, they came up with all the big plays. Four interceptions off Joe Burrow. That was amazing. Those were, they just didn't happen. They made it happen. And they blocked the extra point for, to go, for the winning score for the Bengals. And then they go on and win it in overtime. So, I mean, the Bengals could have won the game even throwing those four interceptions. But uh, that just tells you what kind of team they are. But Pittsburgh just has their number. It Vince, seems like you, every time they play. Hey, hey. What do you got hey, there? Guys, what are you I'm in the again? cafe. Did, did you try this? Yeah, no. I'm in the cafe and you guys are eating. Wait, wait a minute, Liz. Liz, this is. Wait, I'm yeah, in the cafe. she's in the kitchen. What wait the a minute, Liz. Liz, this is a, this is a. Julie's. This is a Julie's. It's a date and it doesn't have a pit in it. <laughs> I mean, most, most of these things have pits in them, you know. I can wow. bite. See, look. I yeah. bit, I bit right through it. You want one, girl? Yeah, give me one. Mm. Well, Jackie, I, I just thought here. you had yourself so yeah. worked up. You, you burned you on your arm. The guy said, we could, the the guy said right. we could actually have a snack while Thanks, we were doing Jackie. the show. Yeah. Well, Jackie, it's a perfect show then. I know. It's we're, my favorite we're kind of show. <laughs> hey, we need a glass of wine <laughs> with this, Jackie. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> some Vince Fer wine. some some, yeah. some Carissa J. We there we go. We need some Carissa J. Oh, man, it would be beautiful with this. Yeah. Very good. While you enjoyed that date, Joe Burrow still doesn't have the help he needs, man. The Steelers' defense got to him today, sacked him. Let me see what it is. Six times. Oh, he went seven down. times, Liz. He went down seven, seven times oh, today. I, I, but he did throw short. for mm -hmm. he threw for 338 yards. I mean, Joey Burrow is like, hey, never say die. He when you have him on the field, you always think you have a chance to win, and that makes a difference when you have a quarterback like that. But you know, they actually ran the ball 133 yards. So that was a big that was a big surprise against uh it, against, it was just a crazy sloppy game of yeah. missed missed i don't know that the steelers should have let the Bengals back in it then the Bengals should have won it it was a crazy game i don't know where we put the Bengals, but we do know joe burrow is the real deal hey let's talk some more you guys eat up those dates how about we take a break uh you are watching the winning side on ion sports network and its affiliated stations we'll be right back